Okay, so I need to unpin. All right, so we have our vocabulary. We've talked about those things. Um, we talked about how fractions are really just another way to say division and what the um, vocabulary terms are for that. We've, we reviewed multiplying fractions and did some extra practice. We reviewed dividing fractions and did some practice on that. And then we started talking about adding and subtracting fractions, which is um, something that we have to think about common denominators with, right? So we've been finding common denominators all week long. So do you suppose we'll continue doing that? Yes, if you're told to add or subtract a fraction, you first must find those common denominators. So let's review the adding fractions cheat sheet. Number one, the first thing you have when you have to deal with adding fractions is find common denominators. If the fractions have the same bottom number, you can skip to to step three, can't you? You can just add straight across the top, then keep the same denominator, then simplify. But not always is life that nice to us. So if it does not have the same bottom number, common denominators, then you must do step two. You would either e find the easiest common denominator, which is multiplying the two denominators to each other to get the, e the common denominator, and then you would also have to build new fractions, new equivalent fractions, right? So you would have on this one to, to take this two and multiply four fifths by two halves and you get eight tenths. You would have to take this five and multiply the opposite fraction by five fifths and get five tenths to get your common denominators, okay? Or you can also use the least common denominator, which is what most teachers want us to do multiplying both fractions by the factors that create the smallest common denominator. There's less simplifying when you do that. So here, if you have three sevenths and you have two sevenths, of course, the smallest or the least common denominator obviously is going to be 14. And we talked about how if, if the numbers had similar factors within them, we could only change one fraction then and then we can move on to step three. But I didn't give you any examples on your notes like that. Okay, hey, we did all this stuff already, if I'm not mistaken. Did we get to this page? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, get to that page, please. So on this page, it says, first of all, the same exact thing as it does for adding, so adding fractions. It says, check for common denominators. When you don't have common denominators, you have to rebuild the fraction to get common denominators, right? So we've shown that, the very same thing as we did with adding. In this case, we took 6 sixths here and we made 18 20 fourths. In this case here, we took 4 fourths and made 8 20 fourths. And then we were able to subtract. 18 minus 8 is 10 20 fourths. And then I marked that one wrong, right? Okay, and have you put notes on this page already? Yeah. Yes? Okay, because I don't remember telling you to write on this page yet. Yeah. We did? Oh, okay. So can you show me yours, Jason, real quick? I want to see what I've told you to do. So this goes to this page, and then this page goes to this page, yeah. So we're just going to talk about this page before we move on. If I have 10 24ths, is that a right answer? Kind of, but I marked it wrong because, and I've been having to mark this wrong a lot of times on your guys' math homework this week. I have seen bunches of these. What do we have going on there, Zeta? We didn't simplify. Both the 10 and the 24 are even numbers. That We should recognize that immediately when they're both even. The rule is, for divisibility rules, that all even numbers are divisible by 2, right? So we know we should have simplified that bugger. So we're going to divide 10 by 2 and 24 by 2. And what do you get? 5 12. 
So that is a much better answer on that one. So let's go ahead and put that on our notes. We're going to write 512, and that is the correct answer. Okay? It's the same answer. It's just a simplified version of that number. Okay? So then let's look at the next one when you're done writing that down. All right. The next one says 7 ninths minus 2 thirds. And here's an example of... Really, we didn't have to change the 7 ninths, did we? Okay, so we could have done this differently. So I'm going to have you do, I'm going to have you do some crossing off for me. All right, we didn't really need to do this 3 thirds, did we? We didn't need to do this 9 ninths. Okay, so we're going to cross all of this stuff off because really this does make the same answer, but I wanted to talk about a little bit about finding the least common denominator. So if I recognize that 9 and 3 are both common factors, they both have the common factor of 3. In other words, 9 is a multiple of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, so on and so forth. I know that I only have to change one of these fractions. I can choose this fraction to change, and then I'm going to have a simplified version of the answer when I'm done. I won't have to simplify. So if I change 2 thirds, by multiplying by 3 thirds, am I going to get a common denominator of 9? Yes. 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. And now I'm ready to subtract. 7 minus that 6 gives me 1. 1. 9. Right. Because we keep the same denominators. Once we have common denominators, we keep that denominator. So was, nine, was that the same answer as 327? Technically it is, right? But 3 27ths would be not simplified. So if you find the least common denominator like that, you're better off because you know you won't forget to simplify when you're done, okay? So both ways get you the correct answer. The way they showed you is called the easiest common denominator and that's just simply using those two bottom numbers multiplied to one another. We don't always have to do that, do we? Okay, is that clear to everybody? Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the practice part. So you're going to probably have to turn your page on this one if I remember right from looking at Jason. All right, here's a good example right here where we have to use easiest common denominator because is two, an, is two a factor of nine? Yeah, nothing times two is going to get you to nine unless you use a, a decimal or a fraction, right? So we're going to use the easiest common denominator. And what easiest common denominator means is you're multiplying the two denominators together. Okay, we don't always have to use the easiest common denominator. Sometimes we can use the least common denominator. Okay, so easiest common denominator is what we've mostly been seeing on the notes that we've been doing. Okay, so for easiest common denominator, I have to take this 9 and put 9 ninths over here. And I'm multiplying by 1 then, aren't I? Is 9 ninths the same as saying 1? Yep, and any number times 1 doesn't change its value. In, in this case with fractions, it just gives us an equivalent fraction. So I'm going to multiply by 9 ninths. And what's 9 times 3? Careful. And 9 times 2? 18. Very good. All right. On this side, then, I'm going to take this 2, and I'm going to put 2 halves on this side so that I end up with 18 again in the bottom. 9 times 2 is 18. What's 8 times 2? 16. Okay. Now I'm going to just go ahead and solve for 27 minus 16. Is 11 18 a number that I can simplify? No, okay? So in your notes, you need to have that written down now. So go ahead and write it down if you've just been watching and listening and not writing.
Okay, a lot of our pencils are down now, so I think we're all done in here. I hope everybody's done in your room. If you need me to slow down, just um, unmute and let me know. The next example says three-fifths minus three-eighths. So, of course, I'm going to put the five-fifths here. I'm taking this denominator, and I'm sharing it over there, changing it into a one. Over here, I'm doing eight-eighths. Okay. And once I multiply these two together, I get 8 times 3 is, I hope it's 24, 8 times 5, 40. 3 times 5 on the other fraction is 15, 8 times 5 is 40. Now I can see that I have common denominators and all I need to do is take that 24 away, or 15 away from 24. 15 taken away from 24 gives me this number, okay? And those two numbers have no factors in common. 40 is an even number, nine is odd, divisible by three, and I know of no number times nine that gives me equal to 40. So I think we've got a good answer here that we don't need to simplify. Okay. So, what are the things that I should probably be talking about now? I talked about subtracting fractions, but there was a big deal yesterday about subtracting fractions and we had to do something special with them. What was that called? We subtracted. We crossed things off, but we had to borrow or regroup. Okay, so any one of those questions we gave yesterday on your homework assignment should be an example of a problem where we had to regroup, right? So I'm just going to go grab that homework assignment. And we're going to go ahead and just copy one of those problems into our notebook. Okay, so see where these eyeglasses are? That's where you're going to make that note. And then you're going to put an arrow over this direction. Okay. So we'll just do, let's see. Hmm. I'm going to do one that we don't have to find common denominators on. So let's go five and three times minus two and five times. Okay. If this number is too small to take this number away and not get a negative number, we need to borrow, right? So we're going to take that and we're going to go 5 plus 10 tenths plus 3 tenths minus 2 and 5 tenths, right? Kind of like, like what they did on our assignment yesterday. But I need to cross the 5 off and change him to a 4, don't I? Okay. You know, I'm doing this the way I don't like to do it. So I'm going to do it the way I like to do it in a race. Sorry. I don't like to go horizontally. I like, or I don't like to go horizontally. I like to go vertical on these questions. So I'm going to go like this. 5 and 3 tenths. Sorry about that if you've been following along. 5 and 3 tenths. And then below it, I'm going to put 2 and 5 tenths. Sometimes it's easier for us to see that those, sub those subtracting problems are too small on top, right? Bigger on bottom or too small on top or whatever your guys' trick is there. But, but anyways, this is still too small. All right. So I'm going to borrow from the 5. I'm going to change them to a 4. Okay, since I took that one away from there, I'm going to add that right here. And I know I need to add 10 tenths 
because 10 and 10 are my common denominator, aren't they? Okay, so what is 3 tenths plus 10 tenths? Well, it's 13 tenths, isn't it? Now I can take 13 and subtract 5, and I get 8, I think. Is that right? 13 minus 5? I keep that 10, I take the 4 minus 2, and I get the answer 2 and 8 tenths, which is wrong because we still need to simplify, isn't it? So I'm going to just write an equal sign next to that because I ran out of room. So 2 and 8 divided by 2 is 4. four. 10 divided by 2 is 5. five. Now I've got a good answer, and I'm showing that I, I have to sometimes regroup when I'm making a subtraction problem. Okay? So that should complete all of our notes for subtracting fractions, adding fractions, multiplying and dividing fractions, all in one group of papers now. You kind of have cheat sheets for all four operations with fractions, okay? So we're going to turn to the next page, and we're going to do some practice problem with subtracting fractions, which will be a review because you did that yesterday, and we've been doing it all week, okay? Sorry, it looks like a mess. All right. So on your paper, I want you to go ahead and try that very first problem. Let's turn right here. It's already done for us, right? Okay. They're all three already done for us. What was I talking about? I thought they were... So does anybody know what I just did there? I think I just pulled something from the top. Did I close the meat? No. No, you're still okay. No, you're still okay. Okay. I'm just panicking a little here. Okay, here, we're back again. All right, I think we're good. I think we're still recording. Yes, okay. So I lied to you. Sorry for lying. I don't like lying like that. But those are three beautiful examples of subtracting when we have fractions that need to be subtracted. Let's think about that first one. This first one here, we start out with a whole number, right? How do you subtract a whole number? Well, you, you have to regroup there, don't you? So they had to regroup. No, they didn't, because the bottom number was one fourth. Did they do that right? So if you have five, Minus three and one fourth. Yep, see, they did do that right. They're showing their regrouping step right here. Do you see how it kind of confuses me when, when they do it vertically instead of horizontally? Okay. This is why I like to do it horizontally. If you can keep all this straight when you're looking at it vertically, that's fine to do it that way. But when I was first looking at it, I was not seeing the regrouping. I was just seeing this happening, and then I freaked out because I saw that result, and I wasn't seeing the regrouping happening. So I, I like to do it this way better. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like to go up and down like Mrs. Franzen? Raise your hand. Okay, most of us do. How many of you can understand that horizontal method? Yep, some of us can understand that too, but I really do prefer stacking them on top of one another. I can see easier what's happening with those extra numbers. Okay, so that's an example of regrouping. And then the next one over the 7 1 fourth, 5 and 2 thirds, we first had to find common denominators, right? Okay. Once they found common denominators, they found out that they had they had six fifteenths minus five and eight twelfths. Six and fifteen twelfths minus five and eighteen twelfths. They did not have to regroup for that one, did they? And when they finished up, they got seven twelfths. Is that in its simplest form? Yes. Very good. Okay. 
And then we got over to this last one here. This last one shows us that they started out with a whole number. And they actually showed you the right way that I like to show, show math being done here. They showed you this number really means 8 and 0, 6, doesn't it? It means it doesn't have any fraction parts. There's no 6. So they took one of these out of the 8 and it changed into a 7, didn't it? And then they cut that one that they took away into six separate little pieces, 6, 6. And they were able to simplify. So is this an example of regrouping? Yeah. Okay. Very good. So make sure you've got those um, labeled like I've shown you. Okay, hopefully you don't, don't um, feel quite as scared of fractions anymore. Okay, most of my students are done writing, I think. Are you just decorating? Or are you writing still? Okay, I'll wait. Okay, I just kind of spied somebody who might have been looking at her library book. Okay, I'm not thinking that's an okay thing to have open during a math lesson. All right, we're going to move on to the very next page. Now there's some practice problems. All right, I want you guys to give those four practice problems a try. I'm going to give you about two minutes, and then we'll go over each of those. And then we'll do some practice on your dry erase boards here. So go ahead and give these a try.
why I didn't hear it. Maybe I have my, I just have my iPad muted. Oh, I can hear it now that I'm really close to it. Okay, so the two minutes are up and we're gonna go ahead and get busy here. So do we have common denominators here on, the, on this one? Yes. Yeah, so we can just start subtracting away, right? Uh-uh, we need to regroup. So I'm gonna change that four into a three. I'm going to add eight eighths because that one that I'm adding has to have a common denominator as well, right? So, uh, so I end up with 11 eighths. 11 minus seven is? Four eighths. Three minus one is two. I'm done. Oh, oh yeah, four and two both have the number four in common. So four goes into four once. A group of four will go into eight twice. Now I'm done and I have a simplified answer. Hey, all right, I'm ready to subtract here, except, boy, that arrow is really wonky. Except I need a bigger numerator on that first number. So I will regroup. Seven turns into a six. I'm adding 10 tenths because these denominators are 10 and I needed common denominators in order to add. So now I have 11 tenths, which makes sense because I have an improper fraction now that I've put a hole back into that one, right? 11 minus seven, again, is probably still going to be four. Six minus five is one. And again, four and 10 have common factors. They are both divisible by two. Two sets of two will go into four. Five sets of two will go into 10. All right, beauty. Hopefully that's what your answers were. Now we have to deal with finding common denominators on these last two. Okay, so I'm just gonna go, I'm using parentheses because parentheses mean what? Multiply, very good. We can use parentheses to signify multiplication. Not so much to mean adding, okay? Please don't use parentheses when we're finding this type of stuff, okay? Because you can never use parentheses for adding. All right, so we have three plus one is four, and four times three is four. Did I add when I should have been multiplying? One times three is three. Four times three is? 12. 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Now, now I need to borrow. Okay, I'm going to add to this 12, 12. And now I am not using parentheses. Now I have 15, 12. Can I subtract 15? 4 out of 15? Yes. 4 out of 15 is going to give me 11 12, 8 minus 3, and I do not need to reduce at all. It's already small enough. Okay, if you didn't get that quite right, please make sure you, you put the steps down. I have them written. If you made a mistake, make sure you fix it on your notes, because these are notes that you can refer back to throughout the year. You're going to save them in the math keep pocket of your folder, okay? So six and four, um, six and four, I don't wanna, I don't wanna turn them into the number 24 when I know six and four both have 12 in common. So I'm choosing to do least common denominators here. And in that case, in order to get the denominator of 12, I'm going to have to do 5, 6 times 2 halves, 3 fourths times 3 thirds. Okay, so 5 times 2 is 10. 6 times 2 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. Okay. Do I need to regroup? In this case, the 10 is on top. If I have $10 in the bank, the banker will let me take $9 out. So I'm okay. I did not have to borrow, so my answer is, okay, I hope I didn't do anything wrong there. Double check my work. Yes. 
15 minus 4. I did 15 minus 4 and got 11. Because when I when I added this whole here, I added 3 plus 12 is 15. Whew, I thought I made a mistake on that one. Sometimes it's hard to see your mistakes, and other people can find them easier than you can. Okay? So, so I bet you're all sitting there wondering, well, when are we going to take this stinking test? Right? Is that what you're all wondering? Yeah. 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 But we're not. We're going to use it as homework because we've had several people who really do need more practice before I give a test on this. Okay? So I'm going to let you guys take the test home and do it as homework today. But before I give you that, I want you guys to have some practice, some more practice. Okay? Well, is this so, worth 40 points? You can keep your notes out if you want to, or you can put them away. I got a question. Um, I saw that you had a question that you blurted it out without raising your hand. And I'll answer that when everybody's ready. Okay, so get your markers and whiteboards ready, and I will go ahead and get started on our practice. Put your hands down. I am still unmuted, so you shouldn't be visiting. So again, I'm just logging into my big ideas. I'm gonna to go to skills trainer. This is a fifth grade skill that should be mastered by now. Don't worry if we're not there yet because we still have time before we get to the high school to learn how to do all this. Okay, mathematical operations with fractions. Okay. Nothing is showing up on my end for some reason for big ideas. Okay, well, Ty had a question before we broke away to do this. Um, he asked, is this test then that's going to turn into homework, is it going to be graded as a 50-point thing? No. Homework is always going to be 50, is always going to be 10 points. All right. So it's homework now, so it's no longer going to be worth 50 points. When I hand it out, it's then going to be worth 50 points. Yes. Can I what? You can do it as homework or wherever you want to do it. Yep. You can turn it in whenever you want to. All right, it just is not a test, so it's it's more like a homework practice page. Yes. Huh? No way. Okay. So I don't see a problem though. Yeah, I just think my big ideas is being a brat. <laughs> I'm going to just close some tabs and maybe it'll be happier. My computer will be happier. Sorry, I'm wasting your guys' time. Okay. Fifth grade. Turn around, please, and don't visit with your neighbors. I know it's hard when we have this whole 45 minutes that we're talking and not working here. All right. Maybe it's just that one that it doesn't like. Maybe I'll pick a different one, a different activity, activity out of the library. Okay. So maybe they just didn't put anything in there and nobody noticed until today. Um. <laughs> Sounds like something I do. How about... OK, 
Okay, so with 15 minutes left in class and my uh, um, big ideas is not working, we're just going to go ahead and hand those tests out that are no longer tests but are practice pages. So let's go ahead and please have a seat until I'm done talking. Let's go ahead and break for now away from the meat. You can hand out the ones that have the brain looking thing at the top. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like um, on, my, on my camera. So, because I know we have a couple of uh, substitute teachers. So the math homework that's due for Monday has this little brain at the top and it says, like it doesn't say anything, but yeah. So as you can see, there's some pretty easy problems. And then also, if you have got poor grades on these fraction pages, you must think about redoing those ones that you got incorrect and turning it in for a better grade. So if you're one of those people that know that you need to do that, may, maybe get this done first and then pull those old papers out and redo the problems you need to work on. All right, we will talk to you later. I get the mark. Yes, please. Yes, please. I know, I put the calculator there. It doesn't mean anything. It means that I put a calculator in the I Okay, if you happen to finish this before study home time, you may turn it in and then get right back to work on your reading stuff. That that writing assignment is due on Monday, so you'll want to bring that with you to study hall if you don't have it done. How many of us have band today? Okay, so if you're in band, remember you've got homework over the weekend. Yeah.